We grow quite a few different kinds of edible perennials in the culinary garden. I love growing perennials because once they're established in your garden, they're so little work. They're there, they grow, they often come up really early in the spring before everything else does. They overwinter really easily with a little bit of help. They are generally pretty low maintenance. And there's quite a nice list of perennial herbs, uh, edible flowers, plants for pollinators, and even a couple of vegetables that are perennial in our zone. So why would you want to divide your perennials? I've heard it said the first year that they will sleep, the second year they will creep, and the third year they will leap. So the longer they're in your garden, the bigger the patch is going to get, and it's almost like an exponential growth. Once they get established, they get really good solid root growth, and they're adapted to the conditions in the spot that they are. So one of my favorite things about having an established perennial garden is that you can share with other people. For a long time when we were getting our gardens established, I was looking around town for plant sales, asking friends who had gardens if I could dig up pieces of their perennials just to establish uh, in, in mine, but now I have lots. So I have some Rebecca here today that's turned into quite a large patch. So I'm gonna move some of these, but I'm also gonna pot some up to share with some friends. It's a good idea to do it early in the year. Right now it's spring and the leaves are up so you can see where all the plants are, but it's very much uh, just growing on the ground, not too big yet. Um, Rebecca is pretty forgiving, so you could do this at different points in time. If you try to do it later in the year, uh, they may suffer a little bit and slow down from flowering. All right, so I've got some pots here. If you want to fill the pots with some soil in the bottom, you can either just use garden soil or I just have some extra old potting soil here. And then if you want to just pick a patch and you can use a shovel or I have a very sharp trowel here. So I'm just going to cut around in a circle. And it's also a cool way to get to know the plants in your garden and what the roots look like. So how deep are they? Are they like a style root that has runners or are they sort of fibrous? So pull a rock out of this. Ooh, there's a lot of worms. So you can also give some worms to your friends and their gardens. So that's a pretty nice healthy clump of, of Rebecca. And yeah, I'll just shake a little bit of the the dirt off so it'll fit in the top of this pot. It really probably should use a bigger pot. Anyway, so that works. And then I'm just going to fill in a little bit on the top. So you can do this kind of quick and dirty. So let's dig some more up. And I'm just making some small pieces and then I might grab a bigger pot and make some bigger ones. Sometimes you're going to get just sort of like individual plants and then other times you can get a big clump. And one thing to be cautious of is if there are any really pernicious weeds in your soil, like even if you think you can pull out the weed roots and not get them, uh, it's not always that easy. So I would just caution against that. And that's something to really be cautious of when you also get plants from a perennial swap or sale or from friends is you may end up with things that are unexpected in there. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll plant new plants in like a nursery bed or in sort of a semi-isolated space and I'll let them grow there for a year and I'll see if anybody else shows up. I'll see what they look like. I'll see how happy they are in my garden if I like them. Because uh, sometimes, you know, I know what Black Eyed Susans or Rebecca look like, but sometimes it's hard to tell what you're getting. I often will end up with different perennials. You can look them up in a book or online, but the way that they look in your garden is always going to be a little bit different. So watering them is really important because that's going to keep them healthy. Uh, it's going to reduce the stress on the plant, it's gonna make sure that the roots have enough water that they can continue to grow and that they don't dry out because if the roots dry out, that's where you're gonna have problems. Uh, if the roots die back, the plant will, will suffer and it may die, but these ones look like they should be pretty good. So yeah, if you live near me, let me know if you need some Rebecca. All right, so now I'm going to dig up some lemon balm. So this is a bigger patch and I'm gonna use a shovel to do it. And I've got a bigger pot. So I'll just go around in a circle. And when you're digging up perennials like this in the spring, 
especially ones that are fairly shallow rooted, what you're looking for is really the roots. The tops are not so important because they will regrow, but the roots are what you need in order for that to work. Um, so you can see this piece of lemon balm is just coming up and it smells so good. Cutting it, I can really smell it. And then it's got a nice root mass on it. So these kinds of perennials are very easy to transplant and these roots will just take off growing right away. Lemon balm is like so vigorous, uh, it grows like crazy. So I'm gonna put it in this bucket, but because I want the plant to be up at the top, I'm gonna add some soil. There was already some soil in here. Add some worms and then just place this right on top. And then I'm just gonna put some soil right around the edge. So I'm gonna bring that to the plant sale that we're holding at the community garden next Sunday. And somebody can have a beautiful lemon balm and it doesn't take long for this much lemon balm to turn into this much lemon balm. So it's a great one to share. Uh, great for teas, we use it a lot. Uh, to flavor different things for desserts. Uh, you can cut it and dry it or you can use it fresh. So uh, it's one of the most prolific and quite a useful herb in the culinary garden. So here we've got quite a few potted up. So I'm gonna keep all of these really well watered. Uh, I'm putting them in a sort of semi shady space where uh, they can recuperate a little bit. And I just wanna make sure that they are all established in their pots and then I'm going to bring them on to their new homes.